ADHD Media says, I love your measurement tattoo, and I have one that I'll be getting permanently done. Congratulations, I use this every single day. Um, have you ever thought about a color tattoo, some form of a color wheel or spectrum that you could use to scan to get color paint? I, I, no, 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 I haven't. And really specifically, like everyone always says, how accurate is this? Your skin is very, your skin is pliable. It moves. How accurate is the ruler? And the answer is, as long as I keep my hand like that, it's pretty darn accurate. Um, and it will stay very accurate. I'm done doing almost all my growing. Uh, but a color wheel, man, all uh, like each color uses different kinds of dyes and each kind of dye have different qualities in terms of their robustness against ultraviolet light. Um, you might notice that uh, when you're when you're at the at the at the dump, that old things that were red are often more faded than old things that were blue. Is red is a more volatile color and harder to make robust against ultraviolet light. Um, I just can't imagine a color wheel on my arm would stay relevant for more than a couple of months. I have a friend who had a, 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 one of his tattoos was just a, a half inch wide red band around his bicep. His, or no, no, I'm so sorry. It was a half inch red band just down, down his arm. Beautiful tattoo, but like 10 years later, it was mostly gone, mostly gone. Um, Yes, that's my Kumail Nanjani imitation. Um, Vicky Bly asks a question, and I'm very excited about answering this. I don't think I have an example here. Um, Vicky wants to know, wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, I don't think I have an example here. Vicky says, you've had your body recreated multiple times. This is true. This is, this is my head, scanned by our friends at FBFX. Um, this is a very useful thing to have because it also fits, it's exactly me. This is literally, there's a hat maker who's reached out to us and wants to make me a hat and they have very specific questions about my head size and I'm like, I'm just gonna mail you this guy. <laughs> um, so yes, I have my body, I have had my body replicated, recreated multiple times, and I've shared that with you. Um, Vicky wants to know about the first time I had my head live cast. Um, hold on just a sec. Hold on, let's see here. No, 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 okay. I didn't know if I could easily or quickly find the casting. It is, uh, it's, 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 it's not, it's not completely obvious, because I think I, yeah, I put it all away. So, when I cast my head, I was newly working for Jamie Heineman in his special effects shop at Colossal Pictures. It was 1994. Yeah, it's 1994. And I had a good friend at the time named Nina Lewis who was a, uh, plausibly is a, uh, a wonderful black and white photographer. Um, specifically, she chose this medium of black and white nudes of people doing stuff, like, like activities. It, it's a very, very specific kind of look. She would go out to like desolate beaches or wide wastelands with a bunch of nude models and shoot them in apocalyptic scenarios, uh, not violent or anything, just very, very evocative landscapes. And part of the landscape were the landscape of the bodies that she photographed, a really wonderful photographer. And like I said, a good friend. And she asked me to be a model in one of her photo shoots. And I said, I would love to. And she said, you're going to have to uh, shave your whole body. And I was like, okay. And at that point, 94, um, I grew this beard in 1988, so I'd had a beard for six years and I had never shaved it. But I was like, okay, yeah, let's shave this beard. And I shaved the beard. And then I, oh, and I also shaved my head. Well, no, my head was already shaved. Um, 
my head was shaved because I hated my hair and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And my hair was such a like a lifetime source of stress uh, that I just shaved it all off because I just wanted to stop thinking about it. And it was totally successful. I had my head shaved for about four years. But wait, where was I? Um, right, the beard. So I had shaved my beard and I had shaved my head. My, I was completely hairless. And I was thinking, this is a perfect opportunity to cast my head. And since I'm now working in special effects, and I have seen for years that they cast people in special effects using alginate and plaster bandages and all of that stuff. I'd seen that sequence on countless special effects shows. And I said to Jamie, hey, do you think we could cast my head? And he was like, absolutely. So understand, Jamie's not my business partner at that point. I'm like a young model maker working in his shop. So he and I, John Searles and Ralph Miller, um, we endeavored to do a casting of me. Uh, 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 Ralph Miller, by the way, is the human being who gave me I reject your reality and substitute my own. Uh, <laughs> a line from the movie Dungeon Master. Um, Ralph was a wonderful sculptor. Anyway, we spent a couple of hours one day going through the going through the process of casting my head. And so what this how this process works is uh, you sit in a chair, you take off your shirt and tape a, a garbage bag around your around your neck here so that you don't get any of the stuff on you uh, where you don't want it. And then you uh, for me with this mask, I uh, I kept my mouth open so they could cast me with my mouth open so I could breathe. And the material we were using to cast is called alginate, dentist alginate. It's what the dentist uses to cast your teeth. It's actually a seaweed-based um, uh, 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 setting compound. And it's food safe, non-toxic, and it sets in like 45 seconds. So absolutely magical stuff. So you have to mix it and put it on very quickly. And so I sat there while they did that and they put all this stuff on me. It's like basically cold oatmeal. They put it on me like this. And then while you're sitting there, you, it's got to harden and then you still can't move. And then they have to cover it over with plaster bandages and they don't cover the whole thing. They cover it in two halves. So um, it's like three people working furiously around you. It's very easy to get claustrophobic. The Weta Workshop people said actually, uh, lots of people came into their shop to be cast and felt claustrophobic. Only once in their entire history of casting people did they ever have someone bolt in the middle of it. Um, but we executed a successful casting and I used that casting of my head for years for patterning costumes off of. I was an octopus from uh, City of Lost Children for the first ILM Industrial Light and Magic Halloween party I went to, and I patterned the way to hold the octopus uh, uh, monocle on my head using the casting of my head. It was such a useful tool. It, uh, I really appreciate how scanning is getting even cheaper, even faster, even with your phone, and I cannot recommend enough getting a scan of your head and, and printing it out if you're at all serious about cosplay or making parts that fit on you. Um, there's a note about shaving my beard. <clears throat> so, I mean, I just thought, look, as long as I'm completely bald, let's let's document me for my history. And it's great. So here I have 1994. I'm 27. Yeah, 27 years old. So I have a perfect record of 27-year-old me's head, which is awesome. Around that time, my then wife and I, my first wife, uh, and I had dinner with one of my old girlfriends. And the three of us were sitting in a restaurant and this is me bald and beardless. And the two of them looking at me and going, don't ever shave that beard again. <laughs> this, this beard's doing a lot of work for my face. It's giving me a chin, it's giving me a jawline. Um, and they, uh, they advised me not to, not to get rid of it. There's a funny, there's a picture. <clears throat> when we go to cons, we bring a, a selection of pictures for fans to choose which one I'll autograph. And 
One of them was filmed right around the time I flew on the U-2 spy plane. And when I flew on the spy plane, I had to shave my chin so that the oxygen mask could have the proper seal against my face. And it's the first time my wife had ever seen my chin. <laughs> um, yeah, those are all the stories around my casting my head. Thank you for watching that video. Are you as sick of the tosses to membership as I am? Good, because here's a brand new one that I recorded today and it's nice and short. There are three tiers to tested membership and they all offer awesome stuff. Find out about it by clicking the join link below. We'll see you there.